Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.5b on the responsibilities of citizenship. And as Vanellope Van Sweets once asked, why did the soldier go to the bathroom? Because it was his duty. Really, Penelope? We're not talking about that type of duty. We're talking about the four duties of American citizenship that we learned in the last lecture. If you're drafted, you must serve in the army. You must follow the rule of law. You have to pay your taxes. And if you're subpoenaed to go to court, either as a witness or a juror, you have to go. But in other parts of the world, citizens have additional duties as well. For example, in Australia, you must vote. And in Israel, you must serve in the military. We're not required to do this in America, but many still feel that it is their responsibility to do these things, like join the military and vote. So we need to figure out what are the responsibilities of American citizenship? And more importantly, why should we meet those responsibilities? With that said, go to the next slide. Civic responsibilities are different than civic duties. Civic responsibilities are fulfilled by choice. They are voluntary. In other words, are you engaged? Not that type of engaged. Are you an engaged American citizen? Are you fulfilling responsibilities beyond what you are required to do according to the law? And registering to vote and voting is a civic responsibility. A Virginia voter must be 18 years old at the time of the next election or 17 years old to vote in a primary if 18 at the election and must meet other requirements like citizenship, residency, a clean criminal record, you can't have any felonies, and mental competency. Well, how do I register to vote? Virginia allows for voluntary registration with a city or county registrar. That's somebody whose job it is to register you to vote. Mail-in registration or registration at the Virginia Division of Motor Vehicles prior to 22 days of the next general election or primary. In other words, it's pretty easy to register to vote in the Commonwealth of Virginia. But lately, things have gotten interesting. Virginia ID or identification voting laws require voters to provide an acceptable photo identification and state their full address to the polling worker on the day you vote. Photo ID laws are controversial. Just ask the founding fathers. James, what the heck is a photo? Go to the next slide. Many Americans vote and feel they fulfilled their civic responsibility, but there are so many other ways to be a good citizen, and one of those ways is actively participating in government. The easiest way to participate in government is to be counted in the United States Census, held once every 10 years. You are not required by law to answer census questions, but it is your civic responsibility to answer those questions so the government can do what it needs to do pursuant to the United States Constitution. You can also join the government. Citizens can run for and hold elective office, so like Kid President, be more awesome. Well, can Kid President run for office right now? Most elected offices require citizens to be 18 years of age or older, so he's not old enough yet. And some offices require a citizen to be older than 18. The president must be 35 years old, a U.S. senator must be 30 years old, and a U.S. congressman must be 25 years old. But you don't have to join the government to actively participate in it. Citizens can communicate with officials to influence the government. And traditional methods of communication include letters and emails, calling or visiting a representative's office, or speaking at a city council or school board meeting. But this is the 20 21st century, the age of open communication, and now more than ever, it is 
easy to talk with your representative. Newer methods of communication include following an official Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram account, completing online petitions and questionnaires, and completing an online comment card on a representative's website, amongst many other things. Finally, a citizen can serve in voluntary, appointed government positions, like serving on a school board committee for grading practices. Go to the next slide. So you don't want to run for president? Okay. You still can participate in a political campaign that also fulfills a civic responsibility. Participating in a political campaign can happen in one of several ways. Citizens can donate money, man a telephone call center to contact voters, go door to door to spread a candidate's message, support a candidate's paid office staff, and drive people to the polls. And I have seen this happen in real life. My mom cooks for a candidate's office staff every other year. It's always lasagna. And Mrs. Rossettini drives elderly folks so that they can vote at the polls. Citizens can also discuss issues with friends, families, and co-workers, both personally and on social media. Another thing you can do is keep informed regarding current issues by watching political news outlets and social media, watching debates, attending civic league and town hall meetings, for example, Allentown has a civic league and Kings Grant has a civic league, and attending city council and school board meetings. Here's the thing. Citizens should respect other citizens' right to an equal voice in government. We have kind of forgotten that lately here in the United States. It is healthy to allow other citizens to voice divergent opinions in open public civil discourse. Go to the next slide. So politics is not your thing? That's okay. You can still fulfill your civic responsibility by participating in community service. Volunteer to support democratic institutions like the League of Women Voters, Rock the Vote, USVoteFoundation.org, and many other organizations dedicated to getting people to vote in elections. Also, express concern about the welfare of your community as a whole on environmental, public health and safety, and education issues. And you do that by attending a city council, school board, or local civic league meeting and speaking at that meeting. For example, our friends in Croatan, the beach is very important to that neighborhood. And Croatan consistently makes sure that their representatives know exactly how important that beach is to the local citizens. Contact your elected official via phone, mail, email, or in person at their office. But again, this is the 21st century. Ooh, internet. So what can you do there? Sign an online petition or even start your own on websites like We the People, run by the White House to express your concerns. Join an internet discussion or call into a talk radio program. But... Be aware that many of these mediums may be biased. You might be calling into a talk radio program that only represents one point of view. Finally, use the internet to create your own blog, site, or video expressing concern on an issue of your choosing. You live in a connected world. You have a say. Go to the next slide. As students, you may not be able to fulfill your civic responsibilities in all the ways we've discussed. But as students, you luck out because there is a lot of community service opportunities just for you. You can help to make the community a good place to work and live by becoming involved with public service organizations, tutoring, volunteering in nursing homes, etc. Volunteer, volunteer, 
volunteer and schools in Virginia will help you out with this schools in Virginia provide students with multiple public service opportunities National Honor Society and National Junior Honor Society Operation Smile the Green Team which is an environmental club and Student Council are just some examples get involved in your school and you will fulfill your civic responsibilities then there's all the stuff that happens outside of school. National and local opportunities exist outside of school for students to become involved in their community, like the Girl Scouts. Mmm, yummy. Boy Scouts, Boys and Girls Club, and other volunteer opportunities sponsored by federal, state, and even local governments, like volunteering at your local library, for example. Finally, faith-based opportunities exist that give you an opportunity to help the community. For example, we have outreach programs like helping to feed the homeless or less fortunate. You as students have multiple opportunities to fulfill your civic responsibilities, so do so and be good American citizens. That's it for this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in class.